In 1519, Cortes and a few hundred conquistadors landed in central Mexico. Two years later, they had brought a mighty empire to its knees and had changed the fate of a whole continent. The events that occurred between these two dates have been judged very differently over time. Praised at first, they have been heavily condemned in recent times by the now anti-colonial narrative. This narrative, however, fails to portray the deeds of Cortes and his men. They even fail to do justice to the native players of the campaign. They are reduced to passive children, victims of Spanish aggression. The Aztecs, just like the conquistadors, knew that this war would be one of total destruction. A destruction that I would say they have brought down on themselves. So listen to my case for the Spanish conquest of Mexico. So first of all, the Aztecs or Mexica were not native to that region. As a semi-nomadic tribe, they arrived there in the 13th century and at the beginning of the 14th century, they would found a city on Lake Texcoco. This city would be known as Tenochtitlan and would grow into one of the most prosperous cities of the whole continent. Modern historians estimate that around 200,000 people lived there when the Spanish arrived. So it had the same size as Paris at this time. A few years and a bloody civil war later, they would form a triple alliance with two other city-states, Tlacopan and Texcoco. This triple alliance would form what we now know as the Aztec Empire. Over the next hundred years and especially under the rule of Moctezuma and Tlacaelel, they would spread their influence over and subjugate their neighbors. By the time the Spanish arrived, they controlled nearly all of central Mexico. Their vessels were required to pay a tribute of resources and humans to sacrifice. So just as the Spanish, the Aztecs were not native to that region and were also an imperialistic power that used force to spread its influence. So they were not that different. Another important point why I think the conquistadors were justified is the Aztec religion. Sorry, that was my dog. The Aztecs believed that their gods needed their help in order to do their work, to keep the world going. For example, their main god, the war god Huitzilipochtli, was fighting a constant battle against darkness. And if he would not be supplied by human sacrifices, he would lose that battle and darkness would win. I mean, human sacrifices were common in that area, but the Aztecs did it on a completely new level. So right now I'm researching about the scale of the human sacrifices and the first number that you will find, 20,000 to 250,000, is way too high. More realistic is a few hundred to a few thousand, which is still very bad. So they needed to expand, they needed to subjugate in order to get enough people to sacrifice. This was a hell machine. But because this did not supply them with enough humans, they also developed a special form of warfare called flower wars. This was a kind of ritual warfare in which the goal was to capture the enemy alive in order to sacrifice him later. This was often done with the city-state of Tlaxcala. As you can see in the map, it's this little point within the Aztec Empire. And some historians even suggest that Tlaxcala was only kept around in order to have a constant supply of human sacrifices. Truly evil. So it was no wonder that when the conquistadors met the natives and told them about Christianity and mostly told them that sacrifices were banned and they did not have to supply the Spanish king with humans to sacrifice, many switched sides voluntarily. It would be wrong to speak of a war between the Aztecs and the Spanish. Rather, the Aztecs fought a Spanish-led coalition. And without this native help, the Spanish conquest of Mexico would have been impossible. City-states like Tlaxcala, the longtime enemy of the Aztecs, supplied Cortes with tens of thousands of warriors, while other native tribes supplied him. Especially the Tlaxcalan troops were very important. During the Noche Triste in 1520, when the Spanish were forced to flee from Tenochtitlan after, I have to say, justified Aztec uprising, it were the troops from Tlaxcala that formed the rear guard and they suffered the most casualties, while a lot of Spanish were able to escape. And during the siege of Tenochtitlan in 1521, it were Tlaxcalan troops that allowed Cortes to cut off all entries into the city. And he also had to fight for every square meter. This needed a giant army and not a few hundred conquistadors. The role of the native allies was vital for the success of the campaign. 
I also want you to try to put yourself in the perspective of the conquistadors. So who were they? Well that's actually quite simple to answer because most of them have a very similar background. They originate from lower nobility families who had fought in the Reconquista for ages. But now that the Reconquista was over they needed a new purpose. And that's why many of them went into the new world. So this was not an easy decision. You had to sell all your land and it was very unlikely likely that you would ever return to Spain. And now you would enter the new world and you would be confronted by its wonders. I mean the Caribbeans were also quite impressive but that's nothing compared against the city on the lake Tenochtitlan. And now add to this that these were very religious men and they would see the human sacrifices. During their first stay in Tenochtitlan they had a great view on the temple where the people were sacrificed. And wouldn't you also think that it's kind of your duty to stop that? And there wasn't just hatred between them. Take for example the story of Malinche and Cortes. Everything that we know from the sources tells us that there was in fact love between them. Cortes basically found her as a slave and left her as one of the most powerful women of the new world. I don't want to say that every case where a conquistador took a native wife was that romantic or was in fact even romantic, but it did happen. Or take the people of Tlaxcala. Following the success of the campaign, they were granted the same rights as the Spanish. In the end, it must be stated that the Aztecs are the ones who deem the responsibility for their own downfall. They themselves created a system based on brutality and fear. And history has shown again and again that these systems are not stable and don't have a long life expectancy. Often, it does not need more than a light fall in pressure before they collapse. In this case, it were a few hundred conquistadors. Already prior to their arrival, the empire was affected by countless uprisings. These could be suppressed by violence. But the empire wasn't able to resist a man like Cortes. What do you think? Tell me your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested, you can watch a similar video about the Crusades. See you next time. Bye.